Hello friends, this is Larry with Rides Done Right, and this is the Salem Roadster Show. This car was already built by Strictly Street Rods, he got wiped out in the forest. <laughs> This is Larry with Rides Den Ride. I'm at the Salem Roadster Show, and I'm with Rick. Rick, it's nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. So one of the things that drew us to the truck was trying to figure out what year it was and what it was made of. I mean, everywhere we looked, we saw something that was different, and we couldn't really identify or nail it to something specific, which we knew there had to be a story with. So why don't you tell me about some of the combinations that you put together and how that came about? Well, when I found the truck, um, it was kind of a rusted out piece of POS, you know. And uh, when I was in my early 20s, I had a 50 Chevy pickup, and I kind of wanted to recreate that. But I wanted to do something different because there's lots of original ones out there. So I thought, well, I'll take this thing, add a Mar Art Morrison chassis underneath of it, Maybe a Good later, start. Yeah, later model step side chassis and or a box and you know and then eh, maybe chop the top, suicide the doors, add some of my own. Thing. I like to work with stainless steel, so I fabricated a custom grill for it and stainless steel front bumper and. Well, that opens the door to a lot of stuff because the reality was most of the time we talk here, there's a builder involved. And it's like who was the builder in your case. The builder was you. Yes, that's that's fact. Yeah. So you did this a lot of this out of and and was this part of out of the love of building and just having the crafts? So you knew that. Well, I've been a fabricator all my life, heavy equipment mostly. But uh, when I retired, I just you know I'd been into cars all my life, so I decided I have three other cars, and uh, that I, did, I wanted to build another truck. So my wife has put up with me building these other three cars. I drag this thing home, and she goes, what are you going to do with that POS, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I said, well, just wait and see. Because I had the picture in my mind what it was going to be when it was finished. So I've kind of noticed that a lot. That's a kind of a common thing there. The guy, when it comes to these building of the cars and things, have the imagination. And I'm not saying it's a male-female thing, but it is pretty common for the wife to go, what is that? <laughs> well... In the case of my wife, she's the one that's paying all the bills. <laughs> of course, you know, we both made the money, but right, right. <laughs> but halfway through the project, she thought, well, maybe this thing is going to be something, you know. Well, going back to the bed, so when you're saying that it was like a rust bucket, it probably had major problems or didn't even have a bed or something. Bed. It was just a cab and a rusted old chassis. Front fenders were all beat up and... So basically all I used was the cab and there wasn't much left of it after I had the sandblasting done. So, so what year was the cab then that you started with? It's a 54. 54. And it, the, the thing with the 54, they only made this particular body style a year and a half. The 54 and the first half to 55. And it has the curved front window in it. Pretty popular, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. So front... I didn't particularly like the grill on the 54, so I found some 50 front fenders, and because I wanted to build my own grill anyway, um, I built the grill on all of my cars, um, and you know, just add in some Kenworth truck headlights and stuff like that, just to kind of make it my own and make it completely different. We were all over that trying to figure out because the, the headlights, it was like, man, man, I don't know, I can't think of, of where that came from all over there so it was a Kenworth truck Kenworth truck yeah and and I you know I was looking around trying to find a dual I wanted to put dual vertical headlights in it and so I'm looking around and, uh, and turns out my neighbor had a Kenworth dump truck I, there's the lights I want on the dump trucks they're horizontal I thought well I'll just you know fabricate some mounts for them and put them in there vertical and so 
That's one of the things that we noticed is the execution done really well. I mean, it's real obvious that they didn't come that way, but when you look at the body work and see how you brought that in, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know that's not how it came. No, no, there's a lot of metal work involved, and I, that's my thing. I like metal work. That's like cool. So let's go back to the bed for a minute. So when, when you went for what year a bed and, and model and all that, how much did it play into what it was you had for a frame structure right off the bat? Or did you just luck into a, a bed that you found that was a good one and you said, yeah, well, I can make that work? I knew I wanted a later model step side bed. So um, I looked around, found this one laying in somebody's backyard. It was kind of beat up, um, but it was 100 bucks, So <laughs> I could do a lot with that. So I drug it home, and it had a big hole chopped in the front of the bed because the guy had problems with the fuel pump or something that was on the truck so he just took an axe and chopped a big hole in the bed so how did you finish the bed what how is it finished on the inside it's it's a, got a spray and bed liner um, after I repaired all the holes and everything in it and then um, if you notice on the front corners of the bed I brought them forward fabricated a piece to actually tie it into the cab corners of the 54 cab so it looks like it belongs on there instead of just being chopped off square so, you know, Suicide Doors was a bit aggressive, too. I mean, was just just something that you said when you built it that you knew you had to have that? or well, I kind of thought, well, you know, I'll chop the top. And then Suicide Doors was something I've always been interested in doing. This is the first one I've built. And I talked to a guy that had Suicide of the Doors on one of these trucks. And he said, just take the hinges, swap sides with them, and of course it wasn't quite that easy, but I bought a donor cab so I was able to cut the front pillars out of the cab and and add those into the back pillars and you know I had to redo the doors too. But so, yeah, it was. Usually one of the limitations with suicide doors are just things that are hard to factor in is that the swing out on them, when they swing in you know, backwards like that they usually right off the bat tend to want to take the and go right into the body with the door so did you did, what did you do about that well um, that was a, an issue and I had to open up the door gap on the rear of the doors a little bit and it took a lot of tweaking to just get that to work and and when we finally got down to painting the body it's a not we're not gonna add too much bond or anything in this would paints gonna have to be minimal because it virtually is a couple of thicknesses of paint is what the clearance is on the back of those doors. So did, and you put stops on it then too so it goes a certain distance? It actually distance. has a mechanical stop that I designed using heim joints and a stainless steel rod so it's a positive stop when it comes when that door opens it's a positive. Well and a good thing because outside of that you got some body work going on. Yeah, yeah for sure yeah yeah. Well, it t let's talk about the, the power plant for a sec. What did you put in it then for that? It's a small block 350, crate motor, 330 horsepower, and a 700R4 transmission. Perfect. So you stayed true to Chevy then as you did it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I have small block Chevys in all my cars. And, you know, the nice thing about a small block Chevy is you can walk into any auto parts store in the country and get a part if you need it so so now on the mechanical part of the engine was that something that you did or did you need assistance with any of that or no I've done that kind of work all my life I have a machine shop too so you know I was able to do a lot of the machining and everything that needed to be done to make this stuff work so well Rick you're making some of us look a little bad here there has to be something in this that you ran into that you said well uh, I can't do that what what was that well I was pretty much involved in all of it except the final paint work um, of course, I did all the metal work. The upholstery, my cousin actually helped me with the upholstery. He did all the stitch work. I did a lot of the fabrication of door panels and stuff like that. And then he did the stitching. And, and the, the interior on this truck is all bison leather. So it has a very unique grain structure. And uh, even the headliner is leather in there. Well, now let's talk about time. You're a guy who did this whole thing. How long did this project take you start to finish? seven months believe it or not <laughs> boy that's gonna kill a lot of people because most people doing these kind of builds especially with the different things that you added that just doesn't seem that seems real unrealistic I mean even for people that have crews and shops well I do have one car that took me 50 years to restore it so it's a Packard convertible 
And uh, so, and help being retired really helps. Yeah. Yeah, so you were able to put in full time, in that seven months, you, you were working your time. I right my shop and I made my living at home my, my whole life. So it's just literally a walk out the door and I'm at my shop and, and uh, I have a beautiful wife that paid all the bills. <laughs> That's, That's a great, it's good that you mentioned her while we're doing this. Well, Rick, it turned out great and I thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you next time, guys.